that's kind of my point. And I'd like to thank you so much for giving me a chance to talk with us. And again, thank you so much for being interested in this. And also, uh, just thanks so much to Bob. Uh, he just found out about this in short notice, so I really appreciate you being able to, to come in and uh, give another valid kind of respect from us. Thanks. Uh, Bob, you're Thanks, Sean. It's nice to be here. Uh, it's nice to see colleagues in the crowd. I appreciate that very much. I appreciate you coming out. Uh, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to talk about the stadium. I, I want to begin by saying this. Politics is the art of serving people. Politics is also the art of the possible. And sometimes tough choices have to be made. Just keep that in mind for a minute for what I'm going to say. When I was campaigning, about the third day I knocked on the door, and a couple came to the door, and it's two young children. And I was undecided about the stadium at that time. I thought about it, but I hadn't really studied it. I entered the campaign quickly. And uh, the mother came to the, stadium, the door and said, what's your position on the stadium? And I wish she washed it around a bit and felt embarrassed. And she looked at me and she said, well, I said to her, well, what's your position? And she said, and I was sure she was going to tell me she was opposed to it. And she said, well, I'm in favor of it. And I'll tell you why I'm in favor of it. I don't understand why Regina always has to settle for second best. And it made a big impact on me. And I went back and said, I'm going to look at this issue seriously. And I looked at the issue, and I'm going to give you a different set of numbers than Sean, although I want to talk about Sean's numbers a bit. But my point to start out with is, in all that campaigning, and even listening to Sean today, no one said to me, Regina doesn't need a stadium. No one said to me, well, we, it's not really that important. No one said to me, I don't really like the riders, so we don't need to have a place for them to play. Well, let me finish. <laughs> and you can ask me, I'll stay all afternoon, but you're going to let me finish first. So I started with the idea that a stadium, like a library, like good roads, like sewers, like fire protection. Could you so identify yourself, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. That's my job. I didn't do. Uh, this is Mr. Bob Hawkins. Uh, he's a city councilor as well and uh, executive in residence at Johnson Street. I'm a prof. Johnson Street. Yeah. Okay. No one said to me, "We don't need this as part of something that's the basic infrastructure in the city." So you then say to yourself, "Well, what are the options here?" Because the other thing that no one seriously contends is that the current stadium is reaching the end of its useful life. This is a building that's, what, 70 years old, that's going to need extensive repairs, it's environmentally unfriendly, it's difficult for people with uh, accessibility issues. No one said to me that we're not going to have to spend some money. And the reality is, the choices are these. First of all, we can fix up the old stadium. If we fix it up, will increase its life by about 15 years. The cost of fixing it up is 100 to $150 million. That's one option. Another option is do nothing and let the current stadium run down. But like an old car, sooner or later we're going to have to do something about that. And the only other option is to build a new stadium. And there are all kinds of proposals on how, what you should have on the stadium. There were grand stadiums with roofs on them. Uh, there were big stadiums. There were small stadiums. There were all kinds of proposals. In the end, the following proposal won the day. A stadium in which the province would put up $80 million. The users of the stadium over 30 years would put up $100 million. The riders, the principal users of the stadium, would put up $25 million plus an extra $15 million in leasehold improvements. And the city would put up $73 million. What does that mean? It means that the city gets a $278 million facility for $73 million. If I said to you, I'm going to sell you an $800,000 house for $200,000, 
you would consider that pretty carefully. And most of you would consider that a deal. Now, how is it financed? Those are the costs. How is it financed? Well, it's financed out of a series of loans, some of which Sean has described to you, but some of which aren't going to cost the city anything. One way it's financed is through a lease from Sask Sport. There's a $75 million lease agreement which will pay part of the financing costs. When you look at it, when you look at your choices, and this is why I say politics is the art of the possible, we are getting as a city a $278 million facility which we need for $73 million. That's a deal. That's a deal. I want to deal with one other set of issues. People say, well, we don't need a stadium because we have other priorities. I get some phone calls that say we don't need a stadium because I'll never set foot in a stadium. Why should I have to pay for a stadium? Here's my concern. I'm not going to be the biggest user of that stadium. I go to a football game now and again, but not that often. I'm embarrassed to say the Dean of Kinesiology is sitting here, but I'm something of an athletic slime. I go to the library all the time. I use the library intensively. I don't use the stadium so much. Some of you will use other facilities in the city, but not others. When you have a city, we all help each other out. And the stadium is a facility meant not just for the riders, but for people playing soccer in the, in the community. Other community groups will use the, the, uh, the reception areas in the uh, stadium. The, the, uh, the university will have access and use the stadium. It's, but my point to you is this. One of the reasons I support a stadium is so that when the library comes to council and says we need to build a book, uh, building for libraries, I can expect from them some support recognizing that libraries like stadiums are part of the basic infrastructure of the city. So what do I think about the stadium? One, it's a good looking building for a city that needs and will benefit from having the, the landmarks of a capital city. I think this will be part of what defines Regina in the same way that the foresighted people who built the legislative building understood that they were building not just for this generation, but they were building something for future generations, just that they had been given uh, from their, their parents and their grandparents, they were giving back and we benefited from that, and now we're building. So we're building for a future Regina here, and I think that's important. 